All right. Apparently, there's more to the car show. There's more to the car show. I was just in one part of the parking lot. Now, there's some vehicles over here. Right? It's about, uh, I'll make my way down there. Still don't care about the motorcycles. And then there's more vehicles over here. Ooh, look, we got some good stuff over here. All right, you see it's got a mini truck hopped up with the low rider action. Suzuki Samurai, you know. Don't really care that much about that, but you know, for you guys in the low rider scene. Let me see here. Shoot. There you go. Yeah, man. Geo Tracker Suzuki Samurai. We got 1964 Chevy Impala right here. Ah, there we go. Right here, 1964 Chevy Impala convertible. You know? It's got the, uh... Well, those are not Craig R's, but those will be a torque thrust wheel. They little, those are American, uh... American racing equipment, torque thrust. Or torque twists. Whatever they call them over there. They call them uh, torque twists or something. Either way, that's an American racing wheel. It's a, it's a similar to the Craig R torque thrust, All right? All right, what we got here, 49 Mercury. No, what is it? 51 Ford. 51 Ford, okay. See, it's got the four door. Four door, it's got the French headlights, all right? It's got the bullet grill. All right, I like it. It's got the, uh, what is this, plastic? All right, she's got the eyelashes too. Said it was a four door. It was a four door. All right. All right, so he shaved the door then. All right, so basically, we got a two. Oh, it's a chop, so he chopped it too. So now he chopped it here, and and he finally shaved it, but the door right here, because the, the trunk with the end start began right here. Hold on, let me do this again. Shaved the door handles, chopped the roof off of it, for the fourth door would have been here. Seal that in, open up the trunk, moved it forward. This car's got a butt load of bondo on it. You know, I'm not gonna it's not gonna bullshit, you know. I said 49 Mercury, you said 51 Ford, but that's when they were going with the shoebox style. You know, they were going with the shoebox style. It's got the lightning bar here, lightning bolt there from Grease Lightning, Grease 2. You know, it's got the side pipes going on down there. It's got the two and a half inch white walls with the dog dish hubcaps. It's got the Continental Parade deck on the back. Yeah. Once again, he Frenched the taillights too. He Frenched the taillights in and you can see he's got the lead in here and all of this. There's Bondo and filler. All of that's filler. But you know, it looks good from afar. Like you stand way back here and it looks great. But then you get all up on it. And you can see all the imperfections and how sloppy it is. But they ain't gonna say nothing though, no, you know. So, what he did was, he took the Continental rear bumper and he cut it and welded it, because you can see he welded it there, welded it there, and he didn't get it re -chromed. So, I don't wanna be going too fast for you, but the music is sort of loud and I gotta keep going, so. You know oh see there you go right these white walls that's a that's a that's a glue on patch there's a company in JC Whitney will sell you the patch that you just glue to the outside of your wheels you know and like I said see shave the door chop the roof off you know it's got the spotlight on it oh it's on both sides too you know I wonder what he's got in this thing. So what do you got in this thing? 292? What engine you got a 292 or 302? Flathead. Flathead? Original. Original. Uh -huh. Wow. You kept it all, all old school, man. Yeah. You know? I just came back from California. Yeah? I rode Route 66. Oh, yeah? I was going to do that. I was going to do that like probably next month. Yeah? Where do you start at? You started in Chicago or you started over here? 
from it. All right, all right. He's got a 28. All right, all right. Four. So you took the Lincoln Highway, then when you got to Chicago, that's when you got on 66. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah all right. Over to Illinois. Yeah. Got on 66. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Right out. Sweet, sweet. Took like three weeks. Yeah, that's good, man. Time. Took your time. Right, right, right. You know? That's awesome, man. That's awesome. We filmed it another car, so we might do it again. Oh, that's good, man. It's not bad, though. You flathead, you know? What, was you, what kind of mileage you get? I was actually getting about 22 miles. Yeah, that's yeah. good. That's good. That's good. Yeah. What, you got a Ford Automatic in here? The two-speed? I actually got a, a 700R Chevy train. Oh, all right, all right. Oh, did that bolt up good? It just had a shift linkage. That was it. No, adapter. Oh, yeah? Adapter. That for the for the for the bell housing. Yeah, it comes with the. But I mean, I mean for the shift linkage for the kick down and everything. No, How'd you set that up? P and M shifter. Oh, all right, all right. You know. oh, so you shift it like a manual then? No. No. You can. It's kind of racing. Yeah, because you know I forgot to get the B and M because I, I know with the seven hundred on four, yeah. it's got that overdrive in the in the rear. Yeah. So I was just figuring how you would how would you do that though. Yeah. You know, yeah. but. Yeah. Well, thank you. That's cool, man. Thanks. Nice. Yeah. Good. All right, so over here. Golly, we got um, it's a Ford Thunderbird. It says '62. All right, '62. As you can tell, the similarities between this and the Continental is that they were both designed by the same guy. Elwood Engel designed this one also for Robert McNamara, but Robert McNamara chose this design to go into production. And then there was another design that he gave him a concession to make the not make the new Continental. That's why they both have this bullet grill in the front. They both have the same recessed styling right there, you know. And then they extended the door back here with the greenhouse top. And then this became why well, it's the circular afterburner tail lights. This became more of the Lincoln Continental for 1961. You know? How you doing? This car. This car. 1961. You know? Robert McNamara wanted a new sports coupe. Yeah, but I wanted you. I had an uncle that was in the Lincoln dealer. Yeah. All right? I wanted the 56, 57, or 58 per. Right. He said... No fucking way! You kill yourself. Right, and he was right. Right, that car was fast, man. Oh. That car was fast. But I mean, the guy that designed this, you know, it was around Elwood Engel, right? Yeah, I know he's a Chrysler designer. So what happened was, for Robert McNamara, you know, Robert McNamara, yeah. Department of Defense, Vietnam, all that. He was he was the chairman of Ford at the time. So he says design this, and so he comes with two cars. He comes with this one and another car, and he says, well, that one's not going to fit our needs. But I'll tell you what, put four doors on it. And that became a '61 Continental. That's why they look the same. That's why they have the same, the same grill. They have the same, the same, you know, bullet shape, you know. And then Elwood, he went to Chrysler, and then he was the chief designer over at Chrysler. That's why when you look at the uh, Imperials from '64, '65, '66, '670, they all look like the Continental because he brought his whole book with him, his whole team, you know. I've had, well, I've had Lincoln's now for 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? What do you got now? The MKC. You like that? No. Uh, well, you know. I, no, I had a hybrid before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. What was the best one you think they made? The, the last one I had was a... Uh, the town car? No, it was too big. Oh, yeah, but the, but the thing is, depends on if you're traditional. Uh, you know, yeah. Yeah, if you're traditional. But the last one I had, the one prior, uh -huh. I had a 15 MKZ hybrid. All right, all right. Gorgeous. All right. My neighbor hit me head on. Yeah, there you go. That'll Ten thousand dollars damage. Yeah, write it off. Right. Wait a minute. Yeah. So I fixed it. Oh, you did? All right. All right. Then the engine light went on. Oh. Couldn't get it off. Yeah. I put another three, three grand into it and said, "Screw it." It's like pulling back the onion. Yeah. Yeah. Be well. Oh, you too. You too. Okay. Oh, that was pretty interesting. I didn't get to tell them with the Lincolns that I had, but we were getting there. We were getting there. But anyway. This is a 62 T-Bird. And next here is front wheel drive LS3 Chevy Impala SS. Uh, this car is so boring. It's so boring. All right, this is the Monte Carlo Impala chassis. It's got an LS3 in the front. 
LS3 is the LS that's been shortened to fit in the block sideways. It's great when you're not running cylinder displacement. As you can tell, it's got displacement on demand. So this thing is prone to eat camshafts like you wouldn't believe. So the best thing you can do is either dis disactivate displacement on demand or uh, yeah, not really much interesting about this car. You know, when they came out with these, the front wheels are wider than the rear wheels because they try to minimize torque steer in this car. This also the same chassis as the Buick Lucerne CXL and the Pontiac Grand Prix GXP. And all three of those cars are exceptionally boring, including this one. Looks good, though, but it's fucking boring, though. All right, this is a Chevy Camaro. This is about a 2015. It's an SS 17. also. 17? 15th anniversary. All right, all right. It's SS also. So this has got an LS in it also. It's got the, I believe, the LS6, if I'm correct. I could be wrong. But this one, they were on to something, and they just, they didn't, they didn't do it. They canceled the Camaro, even though this is really was this really was a great car. It really was a great car. Now the owner for this guy, he's got these Lamborghini doors on it, which is uh, something different, you know. He's got the SS interior. He's got the SS cluster. This, 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 is, the, this is the 50 year edition, so this would be first year of 1967. Ah, uh, jeez, you know. This would have been a great car had they chose to just stick with the production, focus on the essentials, but they decided to cancel this, even though Dodge is still making that Challenger and Ford's making that Mustang, you know? Well, it's a good thing I don't have a thousand subscribers anyway, so the money means they could have monetized this shot, but anyway. So, this would have been great. This is a Jeep CJ5, and it appears to have a Chevy 350 in it. Uh, oh, it's a drag truck. It says he runs the quarter mile at 11.66 seconds at 113 miles a gallon. Looks incredible. Looks great. This looks great. This looks extraordinary. Think about these Jeeps, man, is these things are so light. I mean, just minus the engine and the powertrain, this thing must be about 2,000 pounds at the most. So, perfect drag car if you wanted to make one as a drag car. And you can get them anywhere because it's a Jeep CJ. The car's been in production pretty much for 60 years. So got the roll bar on it, you know, yeah, I like the tail lights, you know, there's LED tail lights with the uh, turn signal on the outer ring, okay, over here, this is a Chevrolet flare side, and due to its height, this looks like a, a four-wheel drive one, so I'm going to say a Napco, because Chevrolet at this time did not make their own four-wheel drive. They farmed them out to Napco to make their four-wheel drives. And as you can tell, it's got four-wheel drive right there. And it says double M, so this is a Marmon. A Marmon four-wheel drive system. And this, I'm going to say, is a 1962. So, well, the thing says 1964, but... Did Ford come out? I mean, did Chevrolet come out with this one in 64? You can tell the Chevrolets from the General Motors. It's only because it says Chevrolet here, but another one will say GMC. And then the General Motors will come with two twin headlights right there. And then the coolest thing about these trucks I like is that this hood <laughs> is interchangeable with the years before and the years after. So you can take this hood... Oh, this hood right here. Hold on. See the hood with the turn signals in it? 
the hood's got the turn signals on the corners. You can take this hood and you can put this hood on like eight model years of cars and it would fit. Not the ones later because the ones later would be the pre-70 ones, like a 67. So they ran with this one up until 66. So this grill and that license plate does make sense to 65. But this hood, like I said, this hood is the best part because you can take this hood off and put this on anything. You know, you can put this hood on anything from like a 55 all the way to like a 66, a 60, right? Now what do you got here? He says he's got a 409. There's no way this car came with a 409. But it says 409 high torque on it. So, 409 high torque. I mean, he added a brake booster here. He's got a dual cylinder reservoir. Yeah, this thing really handles good on the highway. You know, he's got the old-fashioned Delco battery with the, with the removable tops. He's got a Frigidaire. Now, this this uh, compressor was made in Rochester. That's where they ran that Frigidaire unit for General Motors, Rochester, New York. You know, it's got a retrofit air conditioning system. I really would like to know about that because I don't think this thing came with air conditioning. I mean, it's got power steering too. So I mean, a lot of this does not seem to be like it just came off the boat. Because I mean, I mean, I, I dig it with the brakes because that's a safety issue right there. Adding a power brake booster and a dual cylinder reservoir, you know. But uh, you know, it's got that billet style alternator. It's not really worth much, but a little snorkel. You see, 1964 C20. Actually, this would be a K20. With the four-wheel drive for Marmon, you know, and it seems to be a four-speed. That's what it is. Got that's what the gear is like. So this is a four-speed. So you can see the knob there. That's a four-speed. But you know, but even with this, if he's got that engine in there, I really want to know what transmission in there because the guy that had the uh, the guy that had the '51 Ford. He said he put a 700 R4 in there. Now I'm curious about that 700 R4 only because he said it's connected to a flathead Ford. This is a four cylinder, right? Flathead. And he was getting 20 miles a gallon. Not just doable. But I really want to know because you know with a 700 R4, it's got an overdrive, overdrive solenoid and an overdrive drum. So how was he applying the overdrive? To this car without a mechanical linkage or a kick down to the carburetor, which there are setups, but never heard of a setup for 700 R4. All right, so for the next one, all right, we got 1970 Mustang. You know, I like the headlights, man. You know, I like that. You know, I like the headlights, man. It's got a KN filter, it's got that scoop on there. At least the scoop does apparently look functional. There's a get cold air up in there. So, that's swell. Oh, see from the front, I thought it was a 70, but from the side, this appears to be a 68, 69. You know, this was an eliminator body, 69. See, because you know what they did, right? This is what they did. They took the body. Remember, this car came out in 1964 and a half. Right? And then they come out with the Mercury Cougar, which was two years later or three years later. When, when did the Cougar come out? 68? So the Cougar was an eliminator, right? Because this is technically a stretched body from a 64. Now, what Ford did, I mean, you can tell this part right here is just stretched from 64 and a half, from 65. All of this is stretched. But back here, you see, this window and this shape here, this is a cougar body right here. So this panel here, not saying that the owner did that, but Ford did that because that is a cougar body. 
And you can tell by the taillights. Well, I guess you can't tell by the taillights. Because these are Mustang taillights. But you know, the Cougar taillights would come here and it'd be one large bar with ribs on it, with like uh, stainless steel ribs on it. And then you would hit the turn signal. You would hit the turn signal. And then, oh, geez, started to get a lot of dark out of here. But once again, you still got the uh, torque thrust wheels on there. Those brakes look horrible. I mean, the slotted rotors. And, <laughs> you're going to put a fresh coat of paint on those calipers. Oh, what do we got here? Oh, no, a Ford. Ooh. Yeah, that's something you want to grasp on, right? All right, uh, we got like a C4 Camaro right here. And then we have like a 60, I don't know what that is, 68 Camaro. What is that? So, and it's got the hood scoop on it with the gauges. And it's like a Mark IV. It's a 454, but he had it bored out basically like a 598. So it's got two four barrels on there. Double pumper with a high rise intake. And he's got like a tranny oil cooler right here. And stainless steel aluminum. You know. It's really impressive. Really impressive. Fiberglass hood. You know. Uh, it's more like a C6 Camaro right here. Uh, Chrysler PT Cruiser right there. Some Schlocky BMW right there. Uh, another 55, 57 Chevrolet. This is uh, 210. Or something like that. You know, what do you got in here? Well, you got a 305 in here. Or 283 or 305. Looks like a 305 to me. You know, it's got a four barrel. You know. Looks like a four barrel, and I don't know, it's not quite yet, I'll tell you that. Alright, another C3 Camaro. Another C3 Camaro. With. It's another 350. A four barrel 350 with Eagle Black with a dress up kit on it. And, uh, there's nothing spectacular at all. A lot of these C3s, you know, you just, you know it's very hard because the fiberglass body. Develops cracks over the time, and the car itself is legitimately not a comfortable car. I mean, you can watch episodes of Roadkill. This is in the 1980, so this is the last year of this body style because they didn't make one for 1981. They skipped right to the C4 with a 1982 model year, and you got a Mercury Milan Ford Fusion. Then you got a 19. I'm going to say, listen. It's 1950 Ford F1. Now, could be a 49, but the thing about this is, this is the quintessential Sanford and Son truck. If you watch the opening credits to Sanford and Son, this is the truck you see with the red faded paint. 1940, but the one in the TV show was a 49 F1, and this one is a 49 F1. So this would be the Sanford and Son truck right here. And this apparently is all carbon fiber or yeah, some type of steel, but it's like one piece. But the whole thing just tilts forward. Once again, he's got the Craigar torque thrust on, but those are American Racing Equipment wheels. He's got the Ford Flare side bed on it. This is good because this is good, honey. This is all thin and sheet metal. It's got the Ford name stamped on it, you know. So, teardrop tail lights in the rear. He's got a bumper roll pan on it. I wouldn't have done that, but he did that. So, you know, this whole thing seems to be just pretty much 
the same kind of paint that you put on barbecue grills. All right. What we got here? We got another G body. This is the same as that that T type or the other side. Oh, his headlights are better though. This is like a 81, 82 Regal, and it's got a scoop on the hood. Look at this. You know, I am not familiar with the buds on the hood. That, that's, that says he must be playing with something. Oh, it's an 85. You know, this was the end of the G body, so. Jeez. Where are you coming to these car shows? They can't play no cool in the gang or nothing like that, man? Come on now. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely been repainted. He just shaved all of the name plates off of it, the Buick and the, and the Regal and all that stuff, and the Regal badges and everything. All right, another Chevrolet F body. All right, Camaro SS with a little boy doll cabbage patch. Now this is awesome right here. K5 Blazer. This is the full size one. So this one, well, for this year, what the hell? This is early 80s. So the early 80s, they were playing with like 305s and 350s. But see, he's got the stack headlights. So this one has to be after 1983, this body style. Because that stack headlight only ran for a couple of years. And then it's got this billet grill. Well, you got to take these out. He took out his turn signals. And they're just floating in there, which is not a good look for me. But that's not the original grill. That's one of those LMC catalog grills. You know? So, this is 85 also. K5 Blazer. Yeah, man. Silverado. Remember when Silverado was a trim instead of the actual name of the car? So... I said my grandpa had one of these, but he had the GMC one, and it was orange, and it was 73, so the white accents were higher on the body, you know, but that one had rusted out, and it rusted out horribly, you know, but it had to hit a 350 in it, too, because it said 350 on the grill, and this cap comes off, and then, it was a real good truck, man. Yeah, definitely. That's a real good truck. All right, let me slide over to the other side so I can get out of here. It's starting to get sort of dark around this place. Okay, here we go. 1972 Malibu SS. Oh, it's a 71. She's got me because what you got to do is you got to know the years that they came with the twin headlights. You got the single headlights and the twin headlights. See, I thought it was a 72 because of these two slots right here in the turn signal. You know, they would normally give you like treats like that, but you know, so this dude says he's got a 396 in here with fuel injection. I wouldn't have wasted my time with the fuel injection. All right now, see, nine inch Ford with a three and a half ratio. I mean, that makes it good on the highway, but I don't really think, I mean, you know, 